Today we're going to talk about what might be one of my favorite features of Game Wave 64, and that is the masking system. In earlier videos, as I talked through the various uh, step tool actions here, I skipped this button, mask. So let's say that uh, I have some pattern programmed in here, um, maybe something that looks like this. When you hit mask, a couple of things happen. First of all, you can see that the pattern that I had, it's, it's still there a little bit. We can sort of see it's very faintly kind of dimmed below what we're doing. And then we can see here that mask is flashing. So when mask is flashing, you are in mask edit mode, and there's a little bit of a preview, like a see-through preview. In mask edit mode, when you click, you get this pink color. Now, what masking is, is it's excluding those steps from all of these step modifier actions here. So this applies to evolve, rand, invert, and clear. And it doesn't matter if it happens from clicking the button or if it happens from getting a trigger on the port. What mask will do is it will preserve the state of the button. All right, so let me clear out what we have here. So let's take a look at our, at our pattern. And you can see that I've got these two, these two vertical lines. And maybe, maybe we want to keep those. So what I can do is I can turn on mask, and I'm going to click on all those steps. Okay, And then maybe we want to say we never want to have steps on this first row. So I'll go ahead and I'll add a mask here. So you can see I have put a mask over top of some steps that I have, and I've put a mask over top of some steps that I don't have. Now when I run any of these actions, it will leave everything that I've masked alone. So for example here, I'm going to hit clear. And when I hit clear, you can see there a couple of things happened. Our mask flashes to remind us that that's been masked. And you can see that everything cleared except where we had placed the masks and there was something in the step. Now, likewise, if I hit invert here, you can see that all of these steps that didn't have anything on them that are masked, you can see that I clicked it and it's flashing pink. You can see we didn't get anything there. So this is the idea of masking, is these operations will not touch anything that is behind the mask. And this works for all of these actions. So it works for random, works for evolve, works for clear as well. There are a handful of cases where you might find masking helpful to you. So I've laid out a basic patch here and you can see on channel one here, I have a kick drum, which I have wired up to volt knock. And on channel two here, I have this wired up to the SD1 by hamster modular. And both are routed into this mixer, which we will be able to hear. All right, now a common technique of electronic music is to isolate the kick. By isolating the kick, I mean we don't want any other instrument to play whenever the kick is playing. Now, it's okay if you do this in your music, but this is an example where this is a common thing that people will want to do. So over here on track two, which is where I have the snare drum set up to, I have my random algorithm set to leader drive, and one of the things you might notice is that it generates steps here on the same steps that the kick drum is on. And what I would like to do is I would like it to not do that. So I'm gonna clear this. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna hit copy. It's gonna copy all of these steps. Now when I come back to track two, I can open up mask and I can paste those steps from the kick drum into the mask of channel two. Now, whenever I generate a pattern, you can see it flashed there. I'm only going to get steps that are not on the same steps as the kick drum, right? If I do this again, you can see they flash. Now we're not gonna get any of those steps. Cool, so yeah, that's uh, an example of where you might use that. Now we can also use this in the opposite way, which is here, I have all of these steps and maybe I want to use evolve to change things up or maybe I want to use a random algorithm to generate some more steps. Now when I do that, I want my kick drum to always be sure to hit on every fourth 16 note or every quarter note. I want to keep that four on the floor rhythm going. And so what I can do here is I can use a mask to protect these steps so that random and evolve will never get rid of them. So I'm gonna do a similar thing. I'm gonna hit copy. I'm gonna open up mask. 
and I'm gonna hit paste. So now we have created a mask that is identical to our steps. So if I was to, for example, hit evolve, you can see that I'm getting a bunch of other stuff, but those, those steps that are on every quarter note will stay. Likewise, I can hit clear, and you can see that all of this stays. I'm gonna use rand, and what rand will do is rand will give me some extra steps to add a little bit of just extra texture. I can keep hitting this, and I know that every time I do, I'm always gonna make sure to keep that four on the floor kick going. All right, so that's the basic idea. Now, as you start to do this, you will discover that there's more ways to combine these. So for example, you could have two tracks where maybe one is the closed hi-hat and another is the open hi-hat, and you can make sure to mask the open hi-hat hits on the closed hi-hat track. Oh, I almost forgot one last tip. Masking also works with the steps over here. In a previous video, I had showed you how you could use a track to self-patch and trigger either an evolve or a random. Well, the mask will hold when you do that as well. So again, you can have semi-structured random that you're then doing a generative self-randomizing action to. Have fun.